All right, welcome back to a special edition of Money Talk. We are talking about leaning in. We've got a group of uh, Rotman MBA candidates in our audience. As I said, it's the smartest live television audience, I think, ever in the history of television. And, uh, and on, on my panel, actually, we've got a number of people, just to recap who's here. Sandy Cimarroni, she is COO of TD Wealth and the uh, executive sponsor of the Women's Investor Program. Alex Fitzgerald, she is an MBA candidate at Rotman and my co-host. Uh, we also have, of course, Tracy Crook, who is joining us. She is COO of McCarthy Tetro and part of the Lean In Circle of Champions from uh, Cheryl Sandberg of Facebook talking about the need to lean in and she's champion women around the world. And now we brought in Kimberly Moffat. She's a psychotherapist and founder of KMA Therapy here to tell us how to do all that and do that. I'm pointing to you. <laughs> I'm talking about family. I couldn't have staged this any better. You're how many months pregnant? I'm about eight and a half months pregnant okay, now. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. So we didn't do this on purpose, but <laughs> it is, it is uh, somewhat the point. How do you do the great career? Uh, you know, you're saving money. You've got everything taken care of and do that. I mean, it's, it is a lot. Women are being asked to do so much more than they ever were, say, 30, 40 years ago. Absolutely. And a lot of women that I speak to in my practice are often asking me this qu exact question. How do we have it all? Can we have it all? Is it even something that's feasible and on top of all of this when we do have families there's so much pressure on women today to be competitive to see they see what other moms are doing and they want to feed their kids quinoa and all of this healthy food and <laughs> there's just so many things that that are, that are on our, our shoulders in terms of competing and, and being the best and so in terms of our careers we want to be the best at our careers as well and have it all but in my opinion, it's more important to know what's really important to you and say either my career or my family. And is, it, is it an or? I don't think it's an either or. I think we have to take aspects from each that are important to us. So for me, I've been able to do that through business. So growing and developing a business to the point where it's um, grown stable and then to be able to sit back and say, okay, it's at a point now where I'm ready to take some time to be with my family and to take a little bit of time off. Mm -hmm. I think every woman has um, the ability to carve out her own little space in this world and to make the world work for her as opposed to her feeling like she's on a treadmill at all times. Let me ask, and I, Alex, I'm going to let you get in here, um, but for the women who are sitting in this audience and, and for Alex, and I don't presume to ask for you, the last thing on my mind when I was doing my MBA was balance. It just was. I, I, I was career. I wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. So is there anything, though, that I needed to do back when I was younger <laughs> to prepare myself for that balance conversation later on? Like, what sure. are the, what's the to-do list? Well, we've all been there in that position, and I've done a master's as well. So it's, it's, it's one of those things where we kind of have, there are times in our life where we have to put it all into something, and we do that because we have goals and ambitions, and that's important too. But there comes a time, and what I've learned from great leaders and working with a lot of leaders in my practice is that good leaders know when it's time to take a step back. So I think once you have achieved some of the things that you want, you realize that none of it's worth it unless you have someone to share it with or unless you have love and fun and joy in your life. So to me, it's really important to kind of keep those things reminding you of why you're working so hard. Alex? So. <laughs> I, I totally hear where you're coming from and I love it and all I can think of is oh my gosh I started too late because you know I'm 29 sure. and I'm in my MBA program you know I'm doing the calculations in my head and when I'm supposed to be really investing a ton in my career would be you know ideal time for me to have a family as well sure. which is really important to me mm -hmm. so for those of us who didn't plan it out all too well which um, by the way is probably everybody so yeah you know. exactly right yeah. Um, can we make it work? I think it's never too late. And the thing to remember too is women, we can't be perfect all the time. There are life will never happen in a perfect order at all times so if you have a family while you're completing your MBA even that that wouldn't be the end of the world or if you're <laughs> it might be a little bit difficult yeah. but but there are always there are always things that happen in life that we just have to make work and we do it and the, I think the key in all of it is staying positive and remembering that it's not the end of the world and that if we keep our head high and stay positive and support each other then that's the main thing. How, how do you reconcile? I'm curious. I mean, when, you, when you, I think about leaning into career and lean in circles, I think about this conversation, they seem to clash a bit. So is it, do they to you, or is this just my hearing? You know, I, I think um, from, a, from that perspective, it's more 
what choices you make you have to be happy with. Right. So I, I would say if you looked at it strictly as balance, I don't think you can have complete balance. Because yeah, your balance isn't my balance, no, nor is it your balance. No, and yeah. we all have our own definition of it, right? Yeah. And so I think at the end of the day, it goes back to what you were saying, is we just have to be happy with the choices that we make. And is, there will be trade-offs at different points in time, but you have to be comfortable with those choices. Yeah. Exactly. I think the, the, the thing that you need to do before anything else is kind of decide what it is that you want and what's important to you. Do you think and make those choices and live with them. Do you do you do you know what you want? And I'm not being that in a in a uh, disrespectful way at all. It's just that when I again when I was 25, you want different things at 25, 35, 45. Right. So. Right. Yeah. And I think I mean it evolves over time, right? So it's and you like I, I hear where you're coming from. I think you sort of have to think about okay, I know what I how old I am today and what I want today, but you need to think a little bit out into five years and what does life look like for me then. Um, we actually went through the exercise of doing a, a future authoring. Um, so we wrote out, you know, here's what life looks like in five years, and then we actually took the step to go backwards and say, what, what do, do I need to do, do to get there? Sure. That, to me, was one of the most valuable experiences that I've done so far because it really made me realize all of the different things I need to hit on. Um, now, yeah. Did you know? It would be fun to read that in five yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did I you, wish I would have done that 20 yeah, yeah. years ago. Did you know? I mean, for you, I mean, it's been, you know, just on a personal basis, at 25, did you know what life was going to look like 15 years from now or 10 years? No. From now? I mean, yeah. I always knew that I wanted to work. I didn't yeah, really yeah. necessarily know what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I think you learn over time, and as you get different experiences offered to you, you try to figure out and you find out what you like to do. Yeah. And so a lesson learned for me is, and I've had many different roles uh, in the organization, is find something that you really like to do because yeah. you spend a lot of time doing it yeah. um, and don't be afraid to ask for that opportunity that may not be necessarily on the same path but gives you different perspectives right and, and I think that when it comes to balance I mean I do agree I think you can have it all I just don't think you can have it all at the same time right Right, and that's a big one. I, I, you know, it's funny, I was uh, doing some reading and I, I found this on TED Talks, which I know everybody goes to TED Talks, a woman named uh, Dr. Meg Jay, and she was going about how people in their 20s um, try and find themselves, but it's all the habits, you talk about wealth habits that get created in your 20s that matter for the 30s, so, mm -hmm. um, but just it's important in terms of um, partners and life and balance to, to make good habits in your 20s, because that'll matter later on. What would you say are your absolutely do not do's, again, for this group of women <laughs> at this point, <laughs> And regardless of what their, you know, their, their definition of balance may be different than yours and, and, and mine, but what would you say that either they have to do now or should not do now? Sure. I think th the most important thing that I would recommend is setting goals. Now, that being said, when you're setting goals, do not stay so dead set on those goals that you ignore everything else and you pass up opportunities because of that. Um, as you were saying, part of the, the, the beauty of this is being flexible and being able to find out what you like and what you enjoy and then steering those directions and being creative with the whole thing. Um, so set goals, set short-term and long-term goals um, and also be flexible with those goals. All right, we're going to leave it there. Such a pleasure to have all of you here. Great conversation. Sandy Cimarroni, COO, TD Wealth. Alex Fitzgerald, graduate at MBA Rotman 2015. <laughs> there you go. Yes, Kimberly Moffat uh, joining us, of course. She is a psychotherapist and founder of KMA Therapy. And Tracy Crook, COO of McCarthy Tetro, uh, one of the, if not the biggest, law firms in Canada. Great to have you here. Thank you. All right, that is it for us. Uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you to our audience. You guys are wonderful. Thanks so much for coming in. Of course, thank you to you for watching. If you have any questions on anything that you've seen, or if you want someone to take a look at your portfolio, if you have some planning questions, please email me at moneytalk at bnn.ca. I'll get you in touch with someone who can answer those questions for you, and we'll get those answered for you on the show. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again next week.